Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is uh, Derek Rowland. I'm a Deputy Chief of Staff uh, to uh, the Honorable Lisa McLeod, Ontario's Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. I want to thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon uh, for our second uh, regional uh, webinar, uh, outlining the government's uh, supports uh, for uh, small businesses uh, and others within the heritage, sport, tourism and culture uh, industries who have been impacted as a result of uh, COVID-19. The minister wanted to make sure that uh, we gave you every opportunity to hear directly from her, but also her uh, caucus uh, colleagues here, because we recognize uh, the uh, significant impact uh, that has uh, befallen our industries, and we want to make sure that we enable you and empower you to take uh, advantage of the supports that are on offer from the government. Before we get into uh, today's uh, presentation, as well as remarks from the minister, we have a few caucus uh, colleagues and MPPs uh, joining us uh, from across the GTA today. And so first, I'm going to turn it over to MPP Martin to, for some introductory remarks. MPP Martin, over to you. Thanks very much, Derek. And I just want to thank uh, Minister McLeod for organizing this and inviting all of us and all of you. Uh, I think it's really important uh, to make sure that we support our businesses and uh, the government has been working hard to provide programs that do that. The point of this is to make sure that you know how to take advantage of those programs to help you uh, get through COVID and uh, get us back on the road to recovery. So I look forward to uh, listening with you and learning more about how it's all done. And I know this will be a really useful uh, presentation for everybody. Thanks again. Thank you, MPP Martin. I'll turn it over to MPP Deepak Anand next. Uh, thank you, Derek, and really appreciate it, Minister, for your hard work and being an advocate for not just us, for every Ontarian here. Uh, and I want to, through this message, I want to say that, you know, to everyone who's here, we are part of the same community, same family as everyone here it is. I'm a father of two, my, my daughter and my son. We absolutely love going to Dimitri, having a uh, uh, having a, uh, you know, at the end of the day, eating out, watching a movie, going to a ball game and, and uh, building up the memory, whether it is her sweet 16 uh, birthday coming up soon. So we all are connected. We all are having the pinch and the pain uh, because of this pandemic. And uh, is it easy for any of us? Absolutely not. Uh, we as a legislator, it is not easy. As a minister, it is not easy for her. And for the family member, it is not easy. As a business entrepreneur, it is not easy for you. But we've shown already that when we are working together, we are holding each other's hands, it is less painful. And I want to thank you, Minister, for building that confidence in each one of us to doing these webinars. I think it is I don't know how many you've done, maybe over 15, 20 you've done already with so many people have been part of many of those. So uh, we're here to listen. We want to assure you again, uh, you know, uh, we are all in this together and let's keep working hard and let's beat this uh, COVID-19 so that we can have new normal and we can celebrate my daughter's birthday. We can go out and have eating and watch the movie and do everything what we were used to do. Again, thank you, Minister, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, MVP Anand. Uh, next, I'll go to MVP uh, Khalid Rashid. Thank you very much, Derek, and uh, a very good afternoon to everyone who have joined us live here. First of all, I want to start by thanking Minister for her great efforts, especially since this pandemic uh, started back in March as a member of the Finance and Economic Affairs Committee. Uh, for Especially uh, during this pandemic, we heard over I would say five or 600 different stakeholders who came and presented and also presented their ideas. And I know that minister took each and every presentation very seriously, took some great ideas from those presentations. And we saw during our budget uh, last year in uh, our uh, fall budget that a lot of uh, uh, the feedback was implemented so one thing I want to assure everyone who, uh, who are here on this call, that minister is here to listen. She has been listening and she has been implementing your ideas and your valuable feedback. And this shows that minister is very much engaged along with uh, our premier, especially we want, we want to make sure that our economy uh, kickstarts uh, as soon as this uh, this pandemic is over. And with that, thank you so much for uh, joining and having uh, me here with you all. Thank you so much. Over to you, Derek. Thank you very much, uh, MPP Rashid. Uh, uh, next, I'll turn it over to MPP uh, and our PA, Vincent Kuh. 
Thank you, Derek. And yeah, I think, first of all, thank you the uh, minister for hosting this town hall. Uh, I know minister is working so hard and, uh, and this is the second one and you, you were hosted so many uh, different uh, uh, town hall in the region. And um, Toronto, I mean, everywhere in Ontario, the small business is really get hit. And especially is uh, tourism and uh, culture and recreation sectors. And we, that is why the minister, I mean, during this last uh, project in November, um, minister is working so hard to get um, uh, the program. I mean, for the 100, $100 million for the rebuild the, the commute, community rebuilding, in two years, and also 150 million, I believe, is reserved for the um, for the tourism intensive program. So we really hope that um, after the COVID, then we can promote our high call uh, um, hyper local because uh, tourism is the first hit. Uh, you lost the revenue, you lost membership, you lost uh, you lost. Uh, 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 um, I mean. It's really get ahead faster and we we'll get the recovery at the end. So um, we are here to listen and, and, and the government is also a stand behind you and if, when we work together and I hope we can really get this, uh, 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 beat this COVID-19 and, and hope we can get back to normal. Thank you very much, uh, P.A. Uh, We've got uh, a couple other speakers just for a quick introductory remarks. Just a reminder if we can keep it to about uh, one minute uh, so that we have enough time for today's presentation. I'll turn it over to MPP uh, Vijay Thanasalam uh, next. Thank, thank you, Derek. Well, look, we are in a very difficult situation as the government of the IPA yeah, to directly support you. Special shout out to uh, Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industry, Minister Lisa Makhlod for her leadership. I'm here with my colleagues to make sure we are here to directly give you all the information we can to support you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, MPP Thiel Asylum. Uh, and next, we'll take it uh, to MPP uh, Aris Babikian for a one minute remark. Uh, thank you very much, Derek. Uh, Minister, uh, nice to see you and colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to commend you, Minister, for the excellent job that you have been doing to uh, relieve uh, some of the pressure from our sport industries, uh, cultural industries, mainstream industries, and other industries. Uh, if I have one uh, addition I will, or request I would like to uh, put uh, to you, uh, that is uh, one industry we have, uh, uh, they are struggling and they are very important. Uh, they are part of our uh, recovery uh, process and that is uh, the the uh, non-profit cultural uh, multicultural organizations and uh, i'm sure that my colleagues also they are receiving lots of phone calls from different ethnic communities and uh, asking us pleading with us for some kind of help so uh, that's one thing that i would like to leave with you and once again thank you for your hard work that you have been doing through these 11 months uh, to help various industries. Thank you yeah. very much, uh, MPP Babikian. Uh, and we'll do another one minute uh, with uh, MPP uh, Sandhu. Introductory remarks, MPP Sandhu. Thank you so much, Derek. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Mr. McLeod for her leadership during these unprecedented times and uh, supporting and listening to our business community. Uh, there have been several consultations with the business community and uh, Anytime we have approached Minister McLeod for anything, uh, any help our biz local businesses need, she always listened. Uh, so I just wanna thank the minister and looking forward for a very productive discussion here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MVP uh, Sandhu. And I think last but not least, uh, if we haven't lost uh, PA Sabawi, MVP Sharaf Sabawi, we'll take uh, uh, one minute uh, remarks. I think we may have lost him. Oh, there you go. Hi. Hi, Derek. Uh, thank you very much for organizing such an uh, informative session where we can actually address the business uh, uh, sector. And um, the one thing I would like to add is um, Minister uh, Lisa is uh, very responsive. It listen she listens to the business and we move as fast as we can to uh, help 
and to make sure that they sustain. And uh, I'm, I'm also commanding her uh, paper about uh, uh, opening Ontario. So we are ready as soon as the COVID, which we hopefully uh, getting to that, uh, seeing the end of the tunnel uh, and we can kickstart the business and putting Ontario back to where it, it should be the engine, economic engine of Canada. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, P.A. Spowey. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to the Minister to kick us off with today's presentations and our speakers. Minister? Uh, thanks very much, Derek. And uh, thank you very much to my colleagues uh, from the GTA that uh, have, uh, have joined us today um, and for their advocacy for our sectors. Uh, you are all aware that we were hit first uh, hardest and will take the longest to recover. Um, you know, we just recently uh, commemorated uh, one year uh, of uh, an anniversary, if you will, on the, the, uh, the first COVID cases coming. And uh, we pivoted the, the ministry early on in the pandemic so that we would be able to, uh, to support our stakeholders. We recognize as broad as this ministry is, um, how much it contributes both to the uh, cultural fabric of the province as well as to uh, our economic bottom line. And obviously that has taken a significant hit. Uh, today's uh, presentation will be a webinar. Um, you'll be hearing from uh, civil servants, from my ministry, from the Ministry of Finance, as well as from uh, the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services. I will walk you through the supports that are available uh, to our sectors right now. And, and, and we'll walk you through a demonstration on how to, um, how to access those through the, the portal. Um, as some of my colleagues uh, did mention, um, you know, there are a number of supports. The supports include uh, $20,000 in a small business grant. Uh, that grant also extends to our cultural and tourism attractions, as well as our museums. So it's really important uh, that we get that message out. Uh, there's a $1,000 PPE grant uh, for uh, through the Main Street program that uh, we're offering. Uh, that is through the MedCat uh, Economic Development Trade. And then there's property tax and energy bill relief that we want to walk you through that as well. And then just finally, uh, when, when Patricia and Tony from my ministry speak uh, just after I do, uh, they'll be walking you through uh, some of the regulatory changes uh, as a result of the, the, the emergency order. But they'll also be talking about uh, some of the supports that will be available imminently through the ministry. One is $100 million in addition to the existing $103 million budget at the Ontario Trillium Foundation. And we will be offering those types of supports um, as you know, imminently, as I said, um, that will uh, support our tourism, um, community buildings, not for profits and our sports sectors, as well as our cultural institutions. Um, and we are also investing an additional $25 million in the Ontario Arts Center, or sorry, the uh, Council. Um, there will be $24 million for our core uh, cultural institutions across the province and an additional $1 million uh, for individual artists. So, um, you know, this, this is going to be an inform information session. Um, if you have any questions, just because we have over 300 people on the line, uh, we're asking that you either use the Q&A box or more specifically, because it might be a, another ministry that would have to respond, is to email us. And throughout the presentation, you'll see my email address, but I'll give it to you right now. It's minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Again, minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Olivia from my office is right now monitoring um, both areas just so we can get you your information as quickly as possible. Um, but I think you've heard enough from me and from politicians and we'll speak at the end. Uh, but I think it's really important now to get to the meat of the program um, and, and to really look at what level of support there is out there so that you know you can access that. Uh, what we really want to do is make sure that money gets into your organizations and businesses hands. Um, if you're eligible for these programs. And so uh, right now I'll just turn it over uh, first to Tony uh, and then to Patricia to talk about what's available at MISTI. And then of course over to finance to talk about the broader programs and then to MGCS uh, to talk about the portal. So with that, Derek, I'll hand it back to you uh, to over to Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. And thank you again to our speakers. We'll certainly have a chance for some closing remarks uh, near the end for anyone else who may have uh, joined uh, midway through. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, a, our director in uh, the Tourism, Heritage and Culture uh, Division of uh, our Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries uh, to Tony Marzato to walk us uh, through uh, some of the uh, current uh, regulations that are in place uh, across the province as a result of the lockdown and additional restrictions. Uh, Tony, over to you. Good afternoon, Minister McLeod, PA Cook, PA Subway. 
uh, MPP Martin, MPP Anand, MPP Rashid, MPP Thanagasalo, MPP Babakian, MPP Sandu, and MPP Tangri. Good afternoon to everyone joining us. I'm Tony Marzotto, the Director of Tourism Policy and Research in the Ministry, and I'll be walking through the province-wide shutdown measures for tourism, heritage, and cultural businesses, and I'm joined by my colleague Patricia Venna, who will go through sport and recreation activities. I'll outline the businesses permitted to open and the sector-specific restrictions during the province-wide shutdown, including the additional restrictions and measures in place since January the 12th. In terms of the impact on specific types of businesses, I'll walk through these slides fairly quickly as it's known to many of you already. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Thank you. So meeting and event spaces are only allowed to open or specific uh, activities, including the operation of child care centers and authorized recreational and skill building programs within the meaning of the Child Care and Early Years Act, court services, government services, mental health and addiction support services permitted to a maximum of 10 people, such as Alcoholics Anonymous, social services, and collective bargaining, so long as no more than 10 people are permitted to occupy the rental, rented space. Recording of contact information is required with the exception of court services. For short-term rentals, including cottages and cabins, these are only to be provided to individuals who are in need of housing. Previously made reservations for short-term rental accommodations will be permitted only if the individual is in need of housing. Ice fishing huts may only be rented for day use and for use by members of the same household with limited exceptions. For example, the conditions to rent out an ice fishing hunt do not apply if it's for the purpose of exercising an Aboriginal treaty right. For restaurants, bars, and other food or drink establishments, these are closed for indoor dining, although takeout, drive through and delivery are permitted, including the sale of alcohol. Next slide, please. Hotels, motels, lodges, cabins, cottages, resorts, and other shared rental accommodations, including student res residences, are permitted to open. However, any indoor facilities, such as indoor pools, indoor fitness centers, or other indoor recreational facilities that are part of the operation of these businesses are closed. Seasonal campgrounds are permitted to open only for trailers and recreational vehicles used by individuals in need of housing, or are permitted to be there by seasonal contract. There are requirements such that only campsites with electricity, water service, and facilities for sewage disposals may be provided for use. All recreational and other shared facilities, excluding washrooms and showers, must be closed. Other areas of the seasonal campground must be closed to the general public and must only be open for the purpose of preparing the seasonal campground for reopening. For cultural and creative and media industries, Sound recording, production, publishing, and distribution businesses are permitted to open. Commercial film and television production, including supporting activities, are allowed to operate. However, no studio audiences are permitted to be on the film or television set. The film or television set may be located in any business or place, including any business or place that is otherwise required to be closed. No more than 10 performers may be permitted to be on the film or television set. The set must be configured and operated in such a way as to enable persons on the set to maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from other persons, except when necessary for the filming of the film or television production. People who provide hair or makeup services must wear appropriate personal protective equipment. And if there is uh, music, uh, their singers and players of brass or wind instruments must be separated from any other performers by plexiglass or some other impermeable barrier. Film and television post-production, visual effects and animation studios are permitted to open. Book and periodical production, publishing and distribution businesses are permitted to open. Commercial and industrial photography is allowed to open. However, retail studios are not permitted to open. And interactive digital businesses, including computer system software or application developers and publishers and video game developers and publishers are permitted to open. Next slide, please. Concert venues, theaters, and cinemas, including drive-in and drive-through events, are closed for all purposes, including rehearsing or performing a recorded or broadcasted concert, artistic event, theatrical performance, or other performance. Libraries may only open for contactless curbside pickup and return or for delivery. 
Also for permitted services, such as childcare services, mental health and addiction support services to a limit of 10 persons or the provision of social ser services. For these activities, con the recording of contact information is required. And if the library is circulating materials returned to the library, they are disinfected or quarantined for an appropriate period of time before they are recirculated. Museums and cultural amenities are closed. Horse racing is only allowed for training, no races and no members of the public. And nightclubs and strip clubs are only permitted to operate as a restaurant, subject to the conditions that apply to food and drink establishments. Next slide, please. Zoos and aquariums are closed to the public, but are permitted to operate for the care of animals. Amusement and water parks are, remain closed. Tour and guide services remain closed. I'll turn it over to my colleague, Patricia, who will talk about sport and recreational sector businesses. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Tony. So in regards to indoor and outdoor sport and recreation facilities, all facilities are currently closed. There are only a few exemptions, which are for professional leagues, and there are seven listed in the regulation. Those are including NHL, CFL, NBA, all require a plan approved by the Ontario Chief Medical of Health, Officer of Health. There is also an exemption for athletes who have been identified as training or competing for the next Olympics or Paralympics. In addition, a facility may open for the purposes of providing space for childcare, mental health and addiction support services, or the provision of social services. There are certain conditions that apply in this case, such as capacity limits and recording the name and contact information of those individuals. There are also some amenities that are permitted to open, subject to conditions as well. Those amenities include, and you can see the list there, uh, baseball diamonds, basketball courts, tennis courts, playgrounds. Downhill ski hills are not currently open. They are closed. Minister McLeod has established a working group with officials and ski industry experts. So we will continue to work closely with the ski hill operators to facilitate a safe return post shutdown. Next slide, please. These amenities listed in the regulation that I've um, just spoke to may open if you maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from any other person. Team sports are not practiced or played. Other sports or games that will result in individuals coming within two meters of each other are not practiced or played. And then any locker rooms, change rooms, showers, those will all be closed with the exception of things like access to storage, a washroom, or to provide first aid. Next slide, please. Over Thanks. to you, Tony. Thanks, Patricia. I'm going to take you through two sources of additional funding, as the minister mentioned, for tourism, cultural, and sport organizations. I'll first walk you through the community building fund. As uh, tabled in the budget in November, the province is investing $100 million over two years to develop a community building fund that supports community tourism, cultural, and sport organizations, which are experiencing significant financial pressures due to the pandemic. These organizations support community engagement, tourism and recreation through a variety of attractions, experience events and activities. Funding support would be available to not-for-profit organizations and municipalities and the program will be delivered by the Ontario Trillium Foundation. It will include two streams. The first stream uh, will provide support for local community tourism, heritage and cultural not-for-profits such as community museums, local theaters, fairs and cultural institutions to help sustain their operations in the short term and create new attractions experiences and events, and a second stream that will provide funding for municipalities and not-for-profit sport and recreational organizations to make investments in infrastructure rehabilitation and renovation in order to meet public health protocols and local community needs. The Ontario Trillium Foundation has been selected as the program delivery agent as they are well positioned to deliver funding to municipalities, indigenous communities, and the non-profit sector. They have strong relationships with sector stakeholders uh, they have experienced delivering grants on behalf of the government in a timely manner. They have strong systems in place for processing and evaluating funding applications and systems in place for tracking and reporting on results. We are just finalizing details of this fund and you'll see more information coming soon. Next slide, please. Also announced in the November budget was emergency support for core arts organizations. Uh, as announced in the budget, the government is providing one-time emergency funding of $25 million for Ontario's arts institutions to help cover operating losses incurred as a result of COVID-19. This funding will help these organizations remain solvent and prepare for a time when they can fully reopen their facilities 
resume full programming and welcome back their visitors and audiences. The Ontario Arts Council has been selected as the program delivery agent based on their expertise and their history of funding Ontario's core arts organizations, including the major organizations. The agency has a, a strong system in place for processing and evaluating funding applications and for tracking and reporting on results. Once again, the program details are being finalized and further details will be available shortly. As you can see, a lot of work is being done behind the scenes to develop these programs to support the sector. Uh, I will now turn it back over to Derek. Great, thank you very much, uh, Tony, Patricia. I appreciate you uh, walking everyone uh, through uh, the restrictions as uh, they're currently in place uh, as it relates to lockdown, as well as uh, those uh, two key funding streams uh, that I know both you and your teams have been working very hard on uh, to finalize and look forward to rolling out uh, in the very near future. Uh, but want to turn it over uh, next uh, to uh, a representative uh, from uh, the Ministry of uh, Finance, uh, Tim Sherman, who's an Assistant Deputy Minister uh, to Minister Peter Bethlehem Falvey. Um, it's important uh, to understand uh, that uh, the lockdown restrictions that are currently in place uh, also apply uh, to the eligibility structure of the Small Business uh, Grant uh, Program, which uh, they'll walk you through now. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Matt uh, to turn it over to uh, Tim Sherman. Thanks. Matt, do we have uh, some audio? Government announced, thank you for that. So it's gonna provide a kind of a high level overview of, of the grant and um, hopefully be a helpful scene setter before folks take you through the detail of the, of the portal. So turning to slide two, government announced uh, the move to a, to a broader province-wide shutdown on December the 21st and at the same time announced that it would be introducing a new Ontario Small Business Support Grant in recognition of the impact that the shutdown would have on Ontario small businesses. It's worth noting that this new grant is over and above uh, other existing programs that the province has put in place such as the property tax and energy rebates um, or the support that's available to businesses through many uh, federal programs. So the new grant will provide a minimum of 10,000 and up to 20,000 for eligible small businesses that are expected to experience a minimum of a 20% decline in revenue. So every small business will be able to use the support to navigate the challenging times and whatever makes the most sense for them. Um, I think all of you on this call will have a much better sense of some of the, the ways in which businesses will be able to use this support. Um, and there are three basic eligibility requirements in the bottom of the slide, which are probably a helpful framework to use when thinking about um, eligibility for the program. So first, the business needs to be either closed or significantly restricted by the provincial shutdown. And we have a list of businesses that, or categories of businesses that meet that eligibility later on in the slide deck. And the portal, of course, and the application will make uh, that clear. Second, this is targeted at small businesses. Um, and so the definition uh, that is being used for this program is common in, in other contexts. And it's having less than 100 employees. So basically between zero and 99 employees at the enterprise level. And finally, the business needs to be able to demonstrate that it will experience a minimum of 20% revenue decline as a result of the shutdown. The primary way that this will be measured is by comparing April 2020 with April 2019 monthly revenue. Uh, but there are alternate measurements in place for businesses who were maybe established outside this window. And we also have a slide to show you what some of those uh, comparative points would be. And of course, applications for the new program opened today. So the, the portal that folks will take you through is now available for applications. Next slide, please. So there's just a couple of examples uh, on this slide, which we thought might be helpful to take folks through so you can kind of understand how those parameters that I just walked through sort of tangibly uh, work their way through the program. So we have kind of two companies, company A, company B on the bottom of the slide there. And I think we just assume that both these companies meet the business eligibility uh, test in terms of being shut down or significantly restricted. And if you look at company A on the left, so you'll see that it says there it'll experience a monthly loss of $20,000, which is equivalent in their context to a 25% decline in revenue. So that means they meet the 20% uh, 
revenue test and they will be eligible for a $20,000 um, uh, grant, which is also the maximum, but it fully offsets the, uh, the revenue decline that's been uh, presented by the, by the company. And then on the, on the right, uh, there's a monthly loss of 15,000, which is also 20%. So they meet the 20% threshold uh, for the decline and that entire amount, 15,000 would, uh, would be funded. So turning the slide forward to talk a little bit about the revenue comparators. So as I mentioned before, businesses that perhaps were not in operation in April 2019 will still be able to calculate a revenue decline using various alternative revenue decline comparators. And the goal here is to uh, make sure that uh, all small, small businesses um, will be able to be eligible to apply uh, for the grant. Um, as you see, the chart on this slide shows the different comparators. So I think um, one thing you'll notice when you look at the comparators is what the program is trying to capture is two points in time, one where the business would have been kind of in normal operations versus when they would have been experiencing some kind of public health restriction. So for example, if you look at the second row in the chart, um, this is for a small business that went into operation after uh, April 2019. And so as a result, couldn't use that or general comparator. So sometime between May 2019 and January 2020, the revenue comparator that they would use is February 2020 and um, April 2020. When you think back, February was sort of a pre-pandemic, pre-lockdown, provincial lockdown uh, month whereas April, uh, the province was in a lockdown scenario. And so as a result, it's meant to be a good representation of the impact that that business would have been experienced uh, in the current provincial shutdown. And then just a note at the bottom of the slide, uh, winter seasonal businesses will uh, also be permitted to apply. And there's an alternative revenue decline comparator of they can choose between December 2019 and December 2020 or January 2020. December 2020, and that's just a recognition that winter seasonal businesses may have a different um, rhythm and cadence to their business. And so we're providing some flexibility for those businesses. All right, and then slide five um, provides the list of eligible small business types. So these are ones that are subject to closures or significant restrictions under the current shutdown. Uh, as we mentioned, this is sort of the first test that businesses need to meet as part of the application process. Um, and if they meet this plus the revenue test, they will be able to receive a minimum of 10,000 and up to, up to 20,000. Um, for the period of the provincial shutdown, I uh, just wanted to note that this is also the list of businesses that will be eligible for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the property tax and energy rebate. So I know we're, we're focusing on this program, but it's just another reminder that there are other support programs in place uh, for businesses. So if they don't meet some of the other tests, for example, around revenue for employees. There are these other uh, rebates that we could also apply for, and it's all in the same portal, which makes it much easier for businesses to be able to enter that information. And then the, the footnote on the bottom there, just to be clear that there are businesses that are not eligible, and those include those that were already required to close prior to the introduction of the modified stage two measures in October. So that's kind of the starting point for determining business eligibility. And then of course, any essential businesses that are permitted to operate either within capacity restrictions or otherwise being essential are not eligible for the program. And so this is the final slide and hopefully that gives you a good snapshot of program parameters and eligibility. And I will turn it over to, um, I guess it's folks to take you through the, the portal itself. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. I hope uh, everyone uh, found uh, that uh, uh, helpful, but also had some additional information. Uh, for some of you who may have uh, joined us previously before the holidays, uh, we had talked about uh, the small business uh, support uh, program that was going to be rolled out uh, by the government uh, shortly after the holidays, uh, which uh, that presentation there provides a little bit uh, more detail. If you haven't yet already applied, we would certainly encourage you to do so uh, by visiting ontario.ca slash COVID, which is uh, the government's hotspot uh, to gather all the information related to uh, COVID-19, including 
the public health measures that are in place, but also the business uh, support measures that, that were outlined uh, there as well. Um, I do see a couple of uh, questions coming in through the QA uh, function there. We are trying our best to get to, to everyone, but recognizing that we have nearly 300 people uh, on the call here today, we may not uh, be able to directly answer your question right now, but still encourage you to follow up with us uh, and send a note directly to minister.mcleod on ontario.ca. And if uh, it's a very detailed question that we're not able to answer, we'll make sure to put you in touch uh, with the correct individuals. Uh, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our representative uh, from the Ministry of Government uh, and Consumer Services to walk you through exactly how you can take advantage of uh, these supports uh, through the TPON uh, system and how to fill out uh, an application. So Matt, I'll turn it over to you. So I've heard about this new program and I come to Ontario.ca uh, with a business background. Here I click on English. And I see the link where it says support we are providing for small business. I want to know as a small business, uh, what kind of support I'm getting from the government of Ontario. I click on this link, which, which takes me to a page with all details about the different programs uh, that the government of Ontario is having for uh, in support of small businesses. Uh, I see here that there's a new program. I click on it. And it takes me to, to the page where uh, it provides me the list of the programs that are currently available, Ontario Small Business Support Grant, uh, Ontario Main Street Relief Grant, VP Support, Property Tax, Energy Cost Rebates, and what you need to apply. Uh, so the program information, uh, what the program is, uh, what I will get as, get as a small business, uh, what are the eligibility criteria, and uh, information about the other programs as well. So I decided to apply uh, for the Ontario Small Business Support Grant because I meet the eligibility criteria. I, I'll click on apply for funding. Now, when I click for apply for funding, I'm going to take you to show you the test page because I don't want to overwhelm uh, the live system. So it brings me uh, to a page like this. So uh, what you have here is uh, here is that. Uh, get help button, uh, which allows me to get help from the contact center or get access to the program information guide. Uh, if I want to apply in French, I can switch to French as well. If I've already applied uh, for the other programs, I don't need to start a new application. I can resume the application or if I've saved the application for draft because I didn't have all the information, I can continue uh, with the same application. Or I can apply for funding. I can start with a new uh, application. So uh, given that I'm a new applicant, I'm going to click on apply for funding. And it brings me to this page where uh, I need uh, I need to check the eligibility if I can apply for these programs or not. I, by default, the new program is selected. I can select multiple programs if I'm interested, or I can just apply for that program. Click on check eligibility, which will again take me to a series of questions uh, to check my eligibility for the program. Uh, the first question for the small business support grant program is, was my business required to close temporarily or significantly uh, restrict services as a result of being subject to province wide shutdown? I would say yes. Does your business have less than 100 employees? That's the definition for a small business. Did you say yes? And is my business expecting at least a 20% revenue decline? Um, I have a handy reference to the business guide that I can access uh, if I want to know more information about what revenue decline means. I'll say yes, and then I click on next. Now, it says that I'm eligible for the following funding program, uh, the Ontario Small Business Grant. I'm going to start my application. Now, when I start my application, uh, it takes me to a, a series of steps. It's going to ask me to uh, provide my business information, my contact information, information related to the new Ontario Small Business Support Grant, then review all the information I provided in the three steps, provide my banking information, and submit. So I come here, I provide my legal name, so I'm running a small business, Olivia, Olivia's Tea Room, so I provide information. Um, I run it as Store of Happiness. 
and I provide my CRA business number. Now at this stage, I can validate the business number if I'm not sure if, the, if my business number is correct or not. If, if it's correct, I don't need to validate it there. Uh, if I don't know where to get the business number, I will provide a handy tip. Uh, it can be found on the GST, GST return or the employer payroll or T2 corporate tax filing. Now, if I'm a self proprietor who doesn't have a business number, we also provide a handy link on how to obtain the business number from the CRE website. The next step is to provide the address information. I can use address local file postal code, or uh, if I know the address, I can directly key it in. Okay, so I have that. My mailing address is same as head office address. If it's different, uh, I can provide that as well. Click on next. Now uh, here I'm going to provide my contact information. Nash, last name is Akaral, phone number, and my email address. Okay, so I've provided information, I've confirmed my email address is that. Uh, it's very important to provide the correct email address, uh, validate it again, because that's the address that is being used uh, in terms of sending emails, confirming the receipt of your application, uh, confirming the payment process, and if you have to come back and receive your application. I'm going to confirm that I'm the owner and I have the signing authority uh, for the individual trust for the business. At this point, I can save a draft, which allows me to come back. If I don't have all the information, I can come back and uh, resume the application. All this information will be saved. I don't have to provide that information again. Click on next. Now here I'm going to provide information very specific to the Ontario Small Business Support Grant. Uh, right up front, we provide the application guide, uh, which the users can uh, review, the applicants can review, uh, in case they have more questions or they want to find more about the program. Uh, I need to provide my business type and it's restaurants and bars. Now it asks me if my question is part of an enterprise or an affiliated enterprise. Uh, we have a handy tip in terms of what it means, uh, enterprise, or they can refer to the application guide for more information. So my business is not part of an enterprise, so I'm not gonna check that. Now here, uh, if, I, if I was having a winter seasonal business, uh, uh, like a you know a, a ski uh, uh, resort or uh, uh, any any business that is uh, uh, associated with winter uh, seasonal, I can say yes, and it will ask me a series of questions. Uh, if my business was in operation in the current business business structure in December 2019, if I say yes, uh, it's going to ask me for my highest monthly revenue either in December 2019 or January 2020, given that many winter seasonal businesses don't start operating until January. For the purpose of this demo, I'll say no, my, my business is not, not a winter seasonal business. Then the next question is, was my business in operation in the current business structure in April 2019? If I say yes, it will ask me to provide number of employees, my revenue in April 2019, my revenue in April 2020. If I say no, uh, it asks me, it, it prompts me to provide my business full, first full month of operation, uh, you know, uh, the month. And based on that, it's going to ask me for the same information in terms of number of employees, what was my revenue, and in, in February 2020, what was my revenue in April 2020. Uh, for the purpose of the demo, again, I'll say yes, it was in business structure in operation in April 2019. Uh, the number of employees were 10. Uh, the revenue was 10,000 in April 2019. 
In April 2020, the revenue is 2000. Then I attest that the information I'm providing is all good. I go through the terms and conditions. They agree. I've provided now information with respect to this program. I'll say next. Now here I can review all the information I've provided, the business information, the contact information, <coughs> sorry, uh, the information related to Ontario Small Business Support Grant. So all the information has been provided, it all looks good. I can go to the next step, which is to provide my banking information. There's a sample check, copy of sample check provided, just in case people want to see where their branch or what their branch number, institution number, and account number is located on the check. So I'll put that in here. And I'll select the institution number. Now there are many, many banks. We're just not limiting to the top five. Uh, yeah, they are, we cover uh, a broad spectrum of banks uh, within the province. And provide the account number. That's it. Then verify that all the information I provided is correct. And click on submit. So when I click on submit, again, some terms and conditions, I'll be attesting as many Shagrawal that all the information I'm providing is true agree and submit. So uh, once I do that, my application is submitted. And uh, uh, so it, it, it's just a test environment. So it's saying that there's a problem because I've already used the CRA business number. So we have a check as well to ensure that the CRA business number is not used again. Uh, there, there's only one application that can be submitted with that application. But once I click on submit, uh, I'll, uh, my application will be submitted and I'll, I'll get a, a, a notification uh, saying uh, that your submission, uh, your, your application has been submitted. Let me quickly share the email with you uh, on how it looks. Uh, the business will receive, a, receive an email similar to this where it says that you've applied for this program, this is your authorization number, and uh, it's under review. And if it's approved, you will receive a subsequent confirmation email notifying that your payment has been processed. And that it takes around two weeks uh, to receive your payment once the application has been approved. Great, thank you very much, uh, Manish. Uh, hope everyone uh, found that helpful and informative. Uh, before I turn it over to uh, back to the minister, as well as uh, we had uh, another MPP uh, join us, uh, MPP Tangri. Um, I just I want to note a couple of questions are coming in here, asking if uh, you will have access to the presentation following today's uh, discussion. Yes, uh, we will make this available after the fact, uh, as well as an email will be coming uh, to you with additional links uh, containing uh, more information on these programs if you want to do the research uh, yourself, or if you're now interested in applying uh, directly uh, to receive uh, these uh, government supports or if you have not uh, already done so. Uh, but once again, if you do have uh, specific questions related to your business or the eligibility, I encourage you to contact us directly by emailing minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Now, before I turn it back uh, to Minister McLeod uh, for some closing remarks, let me turn it over to uh, MPP Nina Tangri for some remarks. Uh, MPP Tangri. Thank you very much, Derek, and thank you, Minister McLeod, for hosting us today and all of the ministers and staff um, for providing um, some updates and on how we can protect, support and recover. Uh, we know it is a very difficult time for each and every one of you, and we do thank you very much for your hard work in helping us combat COVID-19. Um, but just remember, all of our officers are here to support each and every one of you, so feel free to reach out to us anytime. Thank you very much, Derek. Derek back to you. Thank you, MPP Tangri. And with that, uh, for some closing remarks, I'll turn it back to Minister McLeod. Minister? Yeah, thanks very much, Nina, and to all my colleagues for joining us, and, and certainly the hardest working bureaucrats uh, in, in the country. Uh, I can't say enough about our civil servants. Uh, many of these uh, folks have been working day in and day out, um, dealing with restrictions, but also pivoting policy, making sure that funding streams are available. Um, I really couldn't be more grateful than to be able to work with you, uh, all of you. Uh, look, if you have any questions, uh, please contact us at minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. 
Uh, I know there were a couple questions with respect to the Ontario Arts Council as well as the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Uh, those policy um, decisions have been made and we will be rolling out imminently uh, the qualifications that will be required for each uh, one of those funds. So again, that's an additional $100 million on top of the $103 million uh, operating budget on the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Uh, that will be eligible $25, $30 million this year for sports organizations, tourism entities, uh, not-for-profits, uh, for cultural institutions, um, so that we can kickstart kick that with an additional $75 million next year. Um, in addition to that, we have a, a $25 million um, announcement through the Ontario Arts Council. $24 million of that will go to core cultural institutions, and there will be a forward-facing application uh, call uh, for that. In addition, $1 million has been reserved for individual artists. Um, we continue to work with finance uh, and, and our other sister ministries with respect to refining the programs. Um, so if you have any challenges, please let us know. We're able to work with them uh, very carefully on the, uh, the $20,000 grant, the PPE, as well as the energy um, bill and the property tax rebates. And I just want to assure everyone on here, I know it's been a very difficult period of time for those in tourism and culture and in sport, as well as to our community museums and our public libraries. Uh, I will continue to use my voice at the Economic Resource Policy Committee of Cabinet, the Jobs and Recovery Committee of Cabinet, and of course, uh, as a member of the Essential Business List Committee. Um, I, I wanna thank you all for your time today. Um, we will look forward to getting all of this information out and we wanna continue to support you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us here today. Have a good afternoon.